Okay, how's everybody doing tonight? Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, tonight we're not going to keep you real long because we're just doing a gallery download, install, and test. If you'll go to week 11, there is in week 11, um, I have the code up on the board by the way if you've not entered the code in. In week 11, there is underneath number two where it says experiment with an image gallery and download image gallery extracted to the HT Docs week 11 folder. Um, I have in the instructions here HT Docs homework week 11, but for the in class you might just put it in the HT Docs week 11 just for practice, okay? And then you can do the one in your homework uh, later if you want to. Um, so for the in class, if you wanted to just create in, in week 11 and write inside of HT Docs, that would work fine. Does that make sense? Um, if you wanted to put it in, the, in your homework week 11, go ahead and do that. And you can begin building it tonight, your, uh, your gallery. And what we'll do is make sure you know your username and password for your database. It should be your first initial last name. We've been using all semester for your MySQL database, your default database and username. And then what we'll do is once um, we get started here, we'll browse, once we get those steps done, we've downloaded the gallery, put it in HT Docs. Um, we're gonna browse out to that folder where we uh, installed week 11. It'll start a setup process. We'll enter in the database information for the database. And it's gonna be localhost, your username and password for your database, your database name, and then this part's real important, the DB prefix, underscore GAL. You'll see that a lot when it comes to building databases. What this is, is it's a table, the beginning of all the tables in the database, CConca will start with underscore GAL, okay? And that way it won't conflict with maybe any other tables that might be the same name, like real common name tables, like we've used so far this semester, might be members as a common name table in a database structure. Um, uh, user, user preferences maybe might be another common one. And so if you, you'll see this a lot in uh, downloadable PHP modules where they'll ask you for a DB prefix because they do build quite a few tables and having that underscore GAL will help uh, minimize conflicts with other tables in your database. That makes sense? And so once we browse out to that week 11, we'll enter in the database information here. This is just some, you know, this is my database information. This will not be yours. Once it's successfully set up, you'll enter in a, a, a password and an email that you'll use for your gallery from that point on. Once this is successful, you'll be on the site and begin uploading photos. If your setup messes up, delete it. Delete the VAR folder, VAR folder, created during the setup process and start all over again, okay? I'm gonna run through it myself, show you how easy it is, because some of you might be still downloading your zip file. And if you could just watch me do it from start to finish on setting up the whole gallery, um, I'll also show you during that demo here how to create your own icon using pixlr.com, uh, which you can do that easily. And some of you are familiar with pixlr.com already, maybe, from taking me with photography class. And so um, the other ones we will not go over tonight, but you can definitely play with, um, is Tiny Web Gallery, Build Your Own, Uber Gallery, D Album, and Plogger. Those are some other real popular PHP web albums for photos that you can play with. And so if you choose the one we're doing tonight, which is probably the easiest one to use out of the box, and it's updated the most common because it's the most popular image gallery out there in the world, Gallery 3, and it keeps updating all the time. Um, if you want to just use that one, you can definitely use that one for week 11 for your assignment. Yes? For PHP websites. Yeah, gallery. It's, you'll see why in just a second, why it's so popular. Um, and so um, once you're through this week, figuring out which one you want to use, if you use the one we're using tonight, and by the way, this is the last week for a homework assignment. Remember, next week we start week 12 working on your final, which we'll go over before you guys leave tonight. Um, so once you figure out which one you're going to use, you upload a few galleries, photos, 
from your local computer at home. You're going to upload, um, as always, that link into our Dropbox. Um, the same steps that we're doing locally, you will do externally. If you've not watched the podcast, on, I'm not going to go over that part, the external part tonight, but definitely watch the podcast this week because it goes over in detail how to find out your MySQL connections on 00 web host and update, uh, know what that information is before going through the setup process. And so what you would do is, for, for the external, is you would upload everything like we're doing tonight in week 11 into your external site, browse out to week 11 on your external site, you'll go through the same process. The only difference is your information here for your database is not going to be a local host. It's going to be an external website. It's going to be a MySQL 002 dot whatever dot whatever dot whatever for the MySQL host URL. And then your username and password is also going to be different according to 00 web host. You do have to initially set up a MySQL database. And with that MySQL database, you have to set up a MySQL uh, username and password. And in the podcast, I show you in detail how to do that. So you have to watch a podcast and know how to do that. Okay? But you'll, the local host will do tonight in class. The external host, it's up to you to watch a podcast and do that on your own outside of class. But it's fairly simple to do. The only tricky part is making sure you create that MySQL database correctly on uh, zero, 00 web host. Uh, they do have maintenance on that site periodically. And you might see, you know, things not working possibly like they should. That's normal for a free website. So if you see that happen, don't freak out. What I mean by that is, say you're working on it, you get it uploaded, it's working great. And then you go back an hour later, and you're like, not working, I can't upload files. Have you changed anything? No. Then it's the website. Just kind of hold off and it'll, it'll work. Okay, and when I look at it, uh, you know, later, it'll more than likely work. Now, if it doesn't work, do what I say here, delete the ver file, start over again on the external side. So if other things are working on your site but that one app, more than likely I would start over again to make sure everything is good. If you have to rewatch the podcast again, do that step by step. Uh, that'll help because I've had students tell me, well, I, I did everything but this one thing I forgot. And I said, well, how do you, you remember that? And I go, I'll rewatch the podcast. <laughs> Oh, it was in the middle of it, and I skipped it. And so, uh, yeah, if you rewatch it, now, you know, again, this is a free website. There is times where they go through maintenance, and sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't tell you, but, it's, you know, you can't complain about it because, guess what, it's free. Um, and so, but if it's working locally, and you've not made any changes, okay, and it's not working externally, you're not going to get graded off on it because I can see your code because you guys send me your zip file every week along with your external. So if your local's working and something's not working externally, you're not going to be graded off by that. Okay? So don't, don't worry about that if that happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch me. Just kind of watch on the overhead. I'm going to walk you through the demo part from start to finish here. I've already downloaded this uh, week 11. I already know my username and password for my database. And I'm also going to fire here Pixlr, which I'm going to use in just a second to create a to create a icon for my for the app. Okay, so let me go ahead and see if I've got everything downloaded like I should. Yeah, there's week 11. I put it inside of my uh, htdocs class folder week 11. That's what I use for our, our stuff in here. So let me go ahead and browse out there to class week 11. Okay, so right at the front end, it tells me, let's get going. Installing Gallery is easy. We need a place to put your photos and an info about your MySQL database. Then it talks about photo storage. We're having trouble creating a photo place for your photos. Can you help? We need to create a directory called VAR, V-A-R, in the Gallery 3 directory. This sample code works for most users. Run it in Gallery 3 directory. Check again. And Gallery 3 directory would be week 11 directory for, for us because we, we named it week 11. 
So let me go ahead now on a Mac, it's going to be different. You guys probably won't have this problem on Windows, but if you're doing this on a Mac, you might have an issue the first time getting security right. So I'm going to go into week 11, HT Docs, uh, class, and that's my gallery folder, week 11. So what I'm going to do is go in here, right click, and go to in, get info, and I need to change my security down here to where I can write to this file, where the program can write to the file. And I'm going to use it for all users, read and write, apply to all enclosed items, also with everyone read and write, apply to all enclosed items, and let's see if that does it, get out of there, refresh it, voila, now we're good. So now I have rights to my folder. Now it says you're good to go. So if you have security rights, it'll tell you exactly what to do. Like I said, on Windows users, you generally don't see that message. Mac users, you definitely probably will. You just have to give all rights to that folder. So it said here, uh, we found a place to store photos. And here's a location, htdocs, class week 11, VAR, where they're going to store it. Okay. Now I need to change my database name, username, and password to what I know it is on my computer. And then I'm going to do underscore, what was it in the instructions there? Yeah, thank you, G-A-L. Okay, so I'm going to put that, as, and it's optional, but I recommend doing it. So there's my database name, username, password, local host. Now I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Your gallery three is complete. Ooh, that took a long time. Uh, username admin, and then you'll need to write down this password. I, you can screenshot it and do whatever you want to with it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a screenshot of this so I'll make sure and have it on my Mac. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this password too so I can have it. Start using gallery. Okay. So let me go ahead and go up here and now it says congratulations on choosing gallery to host your photos. You're going to have a great experience. The first things first, you logged into the admin account. You should change your password to something you can remember. So it reminds you immediately to change your password, which is great for security. So I'm going to click this change password and email now. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine as admin for tonight's purpose. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my first and last name, but you can you know, change it to whatever. Okay, I'm going to put in a password here. Put in my email address. I'll put in the URL. Right now, I'm going to just go ahead and put in my, this is what is going to go back to the home directory when I click the home button. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put in a, my website here. Okay, click modify user. There we go. Okay, so now it says there aren't any photos here yet, but before we do any photo stuff, see this gallery icon up here on the left? It says gallery. I want to change that. The easiest way to do it is I'm going to right click. I want it to be the same dimensions as this gallery image that's always up here. So I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to save this image as onto my desktop for right now. I'm going to call it, it's called logo. Then if you remember I had um, Pixlr. I'm going to go to Pixlr to do the editing of that, which is a free online kind of like Photoshop app that I recommend to use for any type of photo editing. It has layering capabilities like Photoshop does and you can save it uh, as a layer capability as Photoshop does. Okay, so there's my gallery. I'm going to just change it up just a little bit. I'm going to put in here, I'm going to duplicate this layer over here, get rid of that one, and I'm going to delete everything that's in there. And I'm just going to really simply put my first name in here. Nothing real fancy there. 
and I might put a background color possibly of a color I like. Lighter color since it's black on the text. And let's dump that into there. Now I'm going to save this as logo and overwrite the one that's on the desktop already. Okay, I'm going to go back to my gallery and then now I'm going to go in here, I'm going to do some admin options for gallery. Notice I have a dashboard, settings, modules, content, appearance, um, user group, and maintenance. So let me play with some of these because it's been a while since I've Maybe uh, figure out which one that is here. Let's try graphics. Nope. Not that. Theme choice, theme options. Sidebar. Nope. change this stuff around sometimes if it's okay. Here we go. It says URL here to my favorite icon. And by the way, this was Appearance Theme Options is where I found it at. Appearance Theme Options. It says here that the URL to my fave icon is ICO. I'm going to leave that there for now. And then uh, that's what's going to be found at the this little folder here. I'm going to leave that for right there. And then here is the actual URL to my Apple Touch, the, the images. Uh, the images for my uh, URL or gallery icon. So let me go in there to uh, um, and see if I can change that easily. Theme options, there you go. So it was uh, Apple Touch Icon PNG. I don't want that over here. Okay, so let me go to my directory. Samp, htdocs, go back one, there we go, and we're in class, week 11, go back and make sure what it was, lib, lib, images, Okay, it's logo.png, I know, I know it is. Logo.png is what you see for the website gallery image, but if I had it on an iPhone, it would, it would actually, what this site does is it actually will morph itself to fit a mobile device. So whether it's a Droid device, Droid, iPhone, regardless what phone it is, a Windows phone, it'll morph it. And then the icon that's in the iPod, uh, the iPod Touch will actually be for iPhone, iPod type of apps but also I believe it uses for other mobile devices too, but I'm just going to save this one as logo.png and overwrite it, replace it, and then I'm going to go ahead and go back here to the dashboard and refresh the page here, and it should refresh that gallery here in a second to my Chuck icon. I got that view image lib maybe I saved it wrong week 11 lib images logo I thought I saved it there
There we go. So there's my new logo icon. Now I'm going to go and add some photos real quick. Now the photo max is um, 20 meg, which is plenty for individual images that you're uploading from a digital camera. So you should be fine there. This FM MPG you don't need. That's for if you're going to upload movies, which I don't recommend because of file size. And so I would leave that alone and not mess with that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and upload some pictures here from my Mac. Let's just upload some here from like my mom and my little niece when she was really little. Let's uplo upload some more there. And I can select more than one. I know I just selected one there. I can select more than that. I think this is my mom's 60th birthday party or something. Okay, there we go. So I'm selecting multiple by hitting the control click key on all the images. Once it's finished, it'll tell you when they're complete. And then I can go ahead and click the done button here. Once I click that, now I can view all of these. What's cool about it too is this gallery has a built-in player to play it in full mode as a slideshow immediately. So literally from start to finish, you can have this downloaded, set up, logo changed, and pictures uploaded literally within five minutes. Okay. Now the first time might take longer, but after that, four or five minutes, set it up on every site. Uh, what's also cool about this is, uh, last thing I'll show you before I start you doing it on your own, is they do have also theme options to where you can add different types of themes. So right now they've got um, theme choices here are limited, but what you can do is you can download a available gallery theme. It says right now there's no other site themes available. If I click download one now, because right now it's just gallery wind and this, this admin theme and gallery theme that's built in already. So here I can actually go to different themes that they have, which they don't have a lot, but um, let's try one here, like a clean canvas one. And once you find the clean canvas, you can actually, it'll show you what the files look like, what the clean canvas looks like. And if you like it, uh, it, it walks you through step by step how to install it. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can download the installation. It says, okay, how are you going to install it? Download the theme from the link above, extract it, admin appearance theme choice, choose a theme, apply it. Let me go back to where I was. So right now, um, gallery, gallery Wind is the, um, if I click on this icon here, it'll, it'll bring me to that Gallery Wind. And this one actually is the one that's already built into the gallery. So I'm not going to change it. But what's also cool here is if I click on any of these pictures, it has a built-in pop-up mechanism that actually pop-ups that photo, and it gives you the file name, the title name, the um, file name, who uploaded it, and then also you can, it has in here a built-in RSS feed that you can give family and friends that RSS feed, and as you add pictures to your gallery of, say, an event, a wedding, uh, uh, you know, a family reunion, whatever, those images will be updated dynamically on an RSS feed. And so you can add, people can come in here and add comments easily. They can come in here and say, you know, you know, great pick. They, they do have to become a, a member so, of the site, but it's easy to set up a membership to create a member. Anybody can create a member, be a member of the site. And when they are a member, they are able to add comments initially, or you can actually limit memberships. You can limit memberships to uh, different um, types of members. Like for instance, I'm an admin, but notice there's two different groups that has them in right now. It's groups is admin and guest are the two groups. And if you come up here to the modules for users, I'm sorry, settings, and go to advanced, here's where it tells you you can actually modify security. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and um, walk through just like I did. You download it. You make sure you know your username and password, which should be first initial last name. You browse out to week 11. If there's any issues, it'll tell you what that, those issues are to fix. 
And then just remember the uh, underscore GAL when it comes to the database setup. And I'll walk around and help you. Upload a few pictures too when you're done. Uh, once you have completely set it up, um, upload a few pictures, change the logo, and just let me look at it before you're done. And that's it for tonight. And then we're going to go over the final, uh, your final that you'll start next week on your final website. I don't know. You'll have to set up a, it looks like you have what? Well, go, well, you need to go to your, your SQL um, and you look at uh, operations, operations to see what users you have. Hmm. Uh, click on your home menu for me. It looks like all you have is a members. Okay, cool. That's what I want to see. Um, Users. Okay, it looks like you have D. Kavanaugh. Uh, that's one. I'm guessing that's going to be the username and password both. So use that. All right. Well, the problem is the password. I think I'm wrong. That's right. Well, you can change it right here. You can change it in there. In here? Yeah, right there. So just click the little pencil that says Edit Privileges or that little pencil on that person. It looks like a person. Let's go back. Go back? Yeah, hit Cancel. Hit the little pencil with the person. Right there? Yeah. Oh, um, you should have an area in here for passwords, so make sure and put a password in there you can remember. And then just click the go button, and then that should reset it. Make sure it says successful at the top. Uh, yep, we're good. Now go ahead and try that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have your username and password right and your database is right, you're good to go. Good. Perfect. You're just ready to start using Gallery. How are we doing over here? How do we change this one again? Just uh, right yeah, right click. Well, that's what I did. I right clicked and save it as, save it as, you know, it'd be save image as, right? Save oh, image as. Like you want to save image. Yeah, and it's in the live gallery. Mm -hmm. Save image as, and then just save that to your desktop for right now, that logo.png, and that's what you'll edit in, um, oh, okay. in Pixlr. And then an easy way to find out the path is you right click on that image, remember, and open in new tab or new window, and it'll open that image in new tab or new window, and it'll give you that direct path for that logo where it's found on your computer. Okay. So if you go back to your logo real quick, right click. And then you want to open that image, view image. Uh, See where it says view image? Uh, just view image. Oh, no. Back, back, back. Right click. Oh, come on, I hit the wrong button. It's all right. Right click and view image. View image. Yeah, that'll take you right to that image on your setup. Mm hmm. Yeah, it should. So we'll do it again. Yeah, view image. There you go. Cool. Now see that path where it says localhost, web 290, homework, week 11, live images, logo. That's the exact path you need to save that logo to when you're finished editing it. And once you do that, then it'll be changed in the logo. Do you get that? If you right click on this image here and go to view image. That path here, once you edit the logo, needs to be saved in that path directory. Okay. Once you edit it in Pixlr. How are we doing over here? How did you do what? Uh, everyone, yeah, I made everyone read white as well. Okay. Read white. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's too good. And then make sure and click on that drop down on the left here and do apply to all enclosed folders. Right yeah, apply to enclosed items. Make sure you do that on all three of them, okay? Okay. That, that way you know you have all rights to save stuff too and create stuff. How are we doing back here? Make sure your username and password is correct on your PHP MyAdmin and you're good to go. If you need help on changing that, let me know. So, 
Okay. Go to your. Uh, I think what I was just going to do is take, not obviously put your information, but put mine. Well, you'll need to go to PHP Miami just to make sure everything's good. Okay. So on the left side here on the home, you should see your name. Yep. You see it? Yep, right there. Okay, click on it. Done. Then when this comes up on the right side, you should see one that's called users or privileges. One of the two. Oh, yeah. Privileges. And that should have your name in there with all privileges. Good. So that's your username, and I'm guessing your password's the same, and that's your database name as well. If I needed to check my password. Do I know? If, I to check if you need to check it, you change this. No, not, yeah, you can click Edit Privileges, that'll work. And then scroll down. Now you can't see what your password is, but you can change yeah. it. Oh, okay, so it doesn't You can change it. it. No, you can't see it, but you can change it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's no password reset, but you can change it there. And then make sure you remember to put the underscore GAL on the creation of the table in the database. How you doing over here, Andrew? Yeah, that was a little big. So what you want to do is go back to your gallery. Okay, right, and go to the your gallery homepage uh, of your local host one, the one you installed locally. The the gallery homepage for the local host. Like it's um, you have it in uh, HC Docs Web 290 Homework Week 11 Week 11. So it's two Week 11s. You don't need to put HC Docs in there. It's Web 290. And then Week 11 Week 11. Week 11 slash Week 11. It has to be localhost for your localhost, right? Do the same. Go, go back over here. Click up here on the top. Over to the right. I'll give you that whole path, and just highlight highlight from the homework on, not what 290, but homework on. There you go. Copy that and bring it over to your browser, and then paste it past the what 290. Is your is your ZAMP started? Uh, go to local host for me. Just type in local host. Something's not right. And then type in Web 290. Replace ZAMP with Web 290. Okay, click on homework. Then click on week 11. And click on week 11. There we go. Okay. Do what now? That's your path. Yeah, that's your path. Yeah, database name is going to be your username, I'm guessing, on your local, unless you've changed it. It should be your username for database name, first initial last name for database name, first initial last name for user, first initial last name for password. Host is local host. And then make sure on table prefix, I put it on the board underscore GAL. Do what now? It's still running. Shouldn't take that long. There's not that many files. Still running. Yeah, it shouldn't take that long. Let me look at it. No, nope. I can kill it. Let me show you. Okay, let's just exit out of this right now. Killed that, good, that's what we wanted. Let's go back to your, where'd you put it at? Week 11 here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what, I went to the, okay, I didn't go to the folder, I went to my hard drive. That's all right, go ahead and put okay. in your password. Oh. 
Okay. And we'll just come over here just to make sure everything's okay. I'll do this one first. Second, it looks like that one wasn't applied yet. Okay, Does good. Have to stay this way then? For this folder, yeah. Oh, oh, it's only okay. applies to this folder. This folder. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to change it. Okay, okay cool. You're good. Right. You should be all right. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, URL, you can just put localhost for right now. And then for password, is that the one that showed us before that you told us to remember? Or is this whatever I want it to be? That's what you want it to be. Oh, okay. I wonder what. Is it going to ask me for the one that they showed me? Because I copied it because you told us. Nope, it won't. Oh, you just. But I copied just in case, just oh. in case you need it. Okay. I thought that yep. Yeah, if you guys remember, if you haven't already done so, for the URL, just put localhost. That's That'll work for what we're doing in here tonight. If you put something else, no big deal. No, that's fine. It'll still work. Okay, I was trying to get to wherever you're at to change them. Okay, you've got to go to the gallery homepage. Start using gallery. Okay. Let's see your homepage first, though. And did you set your username and password? Because that's the first screen that'll come up. Yes, I put it to copy. You already did all that? Yes. So you should need to do all this again, then. You're just setting up the installer all over again. Did you say you already went through that already? So let's back it up to week 11. Get rid of the installer link. You don't want to go through it twice. Okay, you're good. It went ahead and found it. Okay, right click on gallery. I've already got it cut saved. No, go ahead and right click on gallery for me. And you want to go ahead and you want to view, open uh, that image. You want to open that image. So, um, I nope. it as a picture. no, that's fine. I just want to see the path here. Go to properties. Okay, so that's a path. Uh, week 11, LIB images logo, and I would just keep it up on your screen. Just keep it up there. Don't don't exit out of it, because that's the place you need to save your logo.png to, is that location. Okay. Okay. Right now, I just put it in there. You already saved your modified version. Well, I haven't modified it yet. Okay. Yeah. Go to go to pixlr.com, and modify. Yep. Modify that and pixlr.com and then save it to that location on your pop-up. How are we doing over here? I had to download Sam because I forgot my password. Okay, I'll be back. I'm going to check these two to make sure they're okay and I'll come back and help you. How do I get the PHP my admin So I'm used to doing it on the Mac. And I just yeah, I'll come out. I'll help you after I get these two checked out real quick. Right. How are you guys doing over here? How are we doing over here? I'm doing good, thank you. You're doing all right? Oh, you're doing external already. Whew. How are we doing over here? Can you help? Did you change your password or something? I was going to change my password then, and all I got was the other two. Uh, hit cancel. Uh, let me see. I would say if it's locking up on you here, just go back to week 11. It looks like it's where you have it at. Which one is it that you saved it to? Which one are you um, testing at? Week 11 or gallery? Week 11. Okay, it looks like this hasn't been set up here at all. I did set it up. I put it back. Actually, I did. Um, you didn't do week 11 <coughs> underscore one then. Did you do gallery three maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then gallery three. Still loading. Did this? doesn't work I would do go back to that week 11 one it's giving you okay cool now to change password you're gonna go into admin mm -hmm. and then down here where it says um, actually you can do it right over here to gallery administrator you can click on that link it should bring you to your profile take a little bit to load and then from the profile page you can change your password mm-hmm You, no, you don't put host. You don't put local host. You put yeah. You put the path to your MySQL database, okay, so which is going to be right here. This this is going to be MySQL database. Mm -hmm. so the path though to the actual 
database itself is going to be if you click on that enter my PHP my admin uh, it'll be up here yeah go back one for me should be on that first screen there you'll have to you'll have to just hit just type in zero zero web host There's a couple ways you can do it. Okay, go back to your MySQL. Yep, MySQL is where you want to go. Okay, and scroll down. Okay, right here. That's your host. That MySQL 6.00 webhost.com. That's your host, and then that's your username, and then you know what your password is, right? And then your gallery, your database name, you'll get that from that site as well. Yep. It'll be on there too. The only thing that won't be on there is your password. You'll have to type that one in. Sweet. And then make sure it's still the underscore GAL. GAL. Yep. GAL. Make sure it's GAL. And then click continue. Cool. Click start using gallery. Cool. You're external. You're external. Okay, how are we doing over here? Uh, I would start over on the new one then because I don't know what happened. I would start over on that week 11 one because this is locked up for some reason. Yeah, because I would do that week 11 instead of gallery three. Yeah, do the week 11 underscore one, do that one. You'll have to start over again, but it won't take as long, hopefully. Okay. Okay, you need to go to privileges, and you'll need to go ahead and go down to add a new user, I right in the middle of the screen, right in the middle of the screen, add a new user, right in the middle of the screen. Okay, first initial, last name. It needs to be local. Password, first initial, last name. And then retype it on the next field. Same thing. Yeah, I remember how to do that. And then click Grant, Create Pass Database, the middle one. No, nope, the middle one. And then click Check All. Check all. all. Yeah. Scroll down to the bottom right of this page, click Go. Okay, so database has been created with your username and password. It's the same as your first initial last name. So now in this one, were we supposed to go in here and right click and do something? Put it in the root of your HT Docs. Okay, well, I don't have. You do have HT Docs. You just installed XAMPP, right? So you have okay. HT Docs on this install installation. So put it in the root of HT Docs on the new installation. But how do I do that? Just the same way at home? Then? Same way at home. Okay. Yep. You copy that whole folder that's been extracted and put it in the root of HT Docs. Have you already extracted it? Okay. All right. How are we doing over here? Sweet. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's good, Dave. Once you guys get finished, if you want to look at each other's installation, that'd be great. Oh, I like the horses. Of course, that's me. Oh, and I like that. You just put the little, your little friend stuff on at the top of that gallery logo. I like that. That's good. How are we doing back here? Oh, you just uploading some photos? We're trying to find some Windows Windows photos. <laughs> yeah, you can use those if you want to for just playing around. They should be able to some Windows photos in there if you go into what my documents and on the left side over there. Yeah, let's see. Well, if you scroll over on the left side of your screen and scroll all the way up, uh, click on Libraries at the very top. Double click on Pictures. And you should have some pictures in there somewhere. There you go. Upload those babies. Yeah, Whoa! Yay! But that's it. But here's the thing. Yeah. So there's that. I did what you did, and then now I think I need to bring that into Pixlr, right? I've never done the Pixlr before. Yeah. Go back to the tab you just left on your page. Right-click on that gallery image for me. Are you, oh, are you? Go ahead and do that for me, oh. and then go to open uh, or view image. I'm sorry, view image. 
that path that's right there at the top, that's where you want to save it to. See the path it's showing you? Yeah. Just keep that up. Don't move it. Okay. No. And then that way you'll know where to save it to. Now, do I go to Pixlr? Yeah, go to Pixlr.com. Pixlr.com is super easy to use. It really is. Did you? Is this the first time you've used it? You didn't use it super easy? Are you, are you a Photoshop user? Okay. If you're a Photoshop user, it's super easy. Maybe if you're not, it's not. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you're used to, have you used Photoshop before? Okay, well, I can help both of you real quick. I'll wait for him to bring his up, and then I'll help both of you at the same time. So go ahead and bring up your image, that logo image like he has on his. Just click Open Pixlr Editor, Advanced. Yep, and then you want to browse out to that logo.png file that you saved locally. Yeah, open. So go to the logo.png. Okay, now both of you on the right side, you should see a layers area, right? If you'll click and drag the only layer that's in there to the bottom right of that little box, it looks like a piece of paper with a folded end. Drag it to that folded end area, and it'll duplicate it. As soon as you drag and release, it'll duplicate it. Uncheck the bottom layer. Now click on the top layer if it's not already clicked on just one time. That means it's focused now. So click, take your mouse and click once on that top layer there. Now on the left side is all the tools available. We want to select the tool that looks like an eraser. See if you can find that one. As soon as you find the eraser, just go into the area where it says gallery and click and drag and erase everything that's in there. And that's just erasing it all. And then if you want to do what I did just to be easy, you can, once you get all of the ring erased, click on the T symbol, which stands for text on the left side, or the A, I'm sorry, it's the A symbol. It's the A symbol on the left side. The A symbol, click on the A symbol, and then once you've clicked on the A symbol, click in the, over the checkered area one time and begin typing your first name. Just go ahead and start typing in that little box and your first name will show up. There we go. If you need to resize it, go down to the bottom and resize it to make it smaller to fit into the box. You can move stuff around, by the way, while you're sizing it. The little, right there. So you can move Ryan around there while you're figuring out the font size is too big, too small. Once you're satisfied with the font size, I pretty much fill up that whole box as much as you can to where you, know, you can see it. So you might expand yours a little bit, Andrew, just a tad bit. There you go. And then you can move it up. There you go. Perfect. Then go ahead and click OK. All right, and there you go. Go ahead and click OK on yours, Ryan. Okay. Now, what you want to do now is on the left side, on the bottom left, there's a, a, a color area. It might be black, green, whatever. Click on the color spot. It's a little box. It looks, you know, it's a square box. Click on that square box. It's the one that's it's the bigger black box on yours. Yours is a bigger green box. Then you're going to choose from this area the, your color. Just begin clicking there in the circle area and dragging around, and it'll show you here the color you're clicking on. That you're you, when you start clicking on, it'll show over here. So once you're satisfied with the color and make sure it's a lighter color, go ahead and click OK. Okay. So go ahead and do that real quick, okay. and then click OK. Now, on the left side, there's a paint can. It looks like a paint can spilling over. Click on the paint can icon. And then before you do anything, go over back to your layers for me. And there should be a layer zero copy over there. Click on that. Go back over to your, over your name and left click. And it'll dump that color. Make sure you left click. There we go. Okay. Then you're ready to go ahead now and go to the file menu. Go back to the pointer tool. Top left corner of the tool is a pointer tool. And if you guys just pick, when you go home, if you just Google Pixel, Pixlr tutorials, there's thousands of them out there to show you how to use it. Um, yeah, definitely, exactly. So go ahead and do a file save, Ryan. I'm going to show you guys how to save this real quick so you don't lose it. Because there's two ways you can save this file. One is called a PXD format, which is it'll save all the layers and everything. And then you can go back in later and change whatever. That's what I'm going to show you how to do first. So go ahead and go to the file menu in Pixlr, in Pixlr, and then do save. And for the type, you want to make sure it is the Pixlr type. So it's PXD, layered something. 
There you go. And then go ahead and click the OK button. It's saving it as layers onto your desktop. Go and put it on your desktop so you'll remember where it's at. Okay, now go to File again. And this time you're going to save it as a PNG file. The PXD file was just so you'd have that layers later on to play with it. The PNG file is the one you're going to use for logo. Okay. Okay, just remember uh, next week we start our final site. Okay? Did good. Uh, make sure when you guys save it, save it to the location where you need to save it to for your logo. Okay, so I'll go ahead and help you with that. Go to the file menu and then go to your XAMPP directory. Uh, make sure before you hit save as, hit format. I'm sorry, or you already did. PNG, good. You guys make sure you have PNG on yours too, Ryan. I'm sorry, or Andrew. So PNG on the format, then click OK. Browse out to your guys' XAMPP directory, htdocs, and then where this week 11 folder is, and then stop there and I'll tell you where you're at. Okay, week 11, go back, go all the way into week 11. Nope, keep going into week 11. And then you'll go into LIB, and then you'll go into images, right? And then you'll click on logo. And overwrite. Well, click on logo. Yeah, make sure you, yep, there you go. Hit yes. And the same with yours. Double click on live, LIB. Double click on images. Double click on logo.png. Say yes, you do want to overwrite it. And then now you can exit uh, Pixlr and go back to the gallery. And you might have to refresh it a few times, but it should eventually show you that new logo that you just created. Yeah, it's in memory right now, so it might take a few clicks like mine did on the overhead for it to finally get it. Uh, but then eventually it'll get it. Just hit the refresh button on your browser. It's a little quicker sometimes to actually do it. Okay, your Andrews is good. It's take a while because it's reading off this, right? Yeah, it'll take a little bit. Because it has it all, it has it in cache memory on the browser, so it takes a little bit. But eventually, yours should refresh. Yours is good, Andrew, and your pictures look good. Oh, yeah. There you go, Ryan. You're good. So you guys are successful on it. Deborah, how are you doing? I'm wrapping up my logo. Okay. And you're done here. Do what now? Do what? The external one. Yeah. Do we need to change all this on the external? Yeah, just the logo, just like you did in here. It'll save it in the same location, but it'll be external. Okay. Yeah. Is it, well, it's already, I already did it today. Oh, okay. So I did it, and I, I didn't realize we were supposed to do that until oh. I got Oh, that's okay. There. That's all right. That's fine. You know how to do it because we've done it in here, yeah, so just right. do the same, the same thing, thing, but you'll upload it to that same folder externally. Okay. It'll be in the library images folder, LIB, LIB images folder. Sweet. Okay. I know some are still working on it, but what do you guys think? On a scale from 1 to 10, one being very easy, 10 being very difficult. What's your experience so far out of the box with gallery? What do you think? One to five being very easy. How many thinks one to five? He says zero. <laughs> okay. How he says five to 10 maybe? Okay. All right. That's all right. That's fine. Uh, but once you've actually done it successfully the first time from start to finish, uh, it, it, gets, it just fly by. And, you know, I've installed multiple websites. It works really nice. Um, let me talk real quick while you're finishing up there. Um, the go over final site stuff. Next week we'll be starting your final site. And remember, you're supposed to be uh, thinking about and already have finished, hopefully, your final site thought or whether you're doing on a business or personal site. So let me quickly go to uh, week 11 in our class. Good job, by the way, helping each other on the gallery. Excellent. Your photos look really good. I can't wait to see more of them. Uh, and you can use this gallery, by the way, in your final site. It's so easy to use. You can just use it in your final site for your images directory. Um, so just, just to wrap up this week 11 before we go into final, once you're finished, I'm guessing everybody's going to use gallery. You're not going to change it. But if you're going to play with any of these besides gallery, um, the one that's kind of cool you might want to look at is this Uber Gallery. It's pretty cool. And then this uh, plogger.org. Those two you can maybe look at. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but it's good to look at it. 
So for this week, you're, as always, zi zipping together your local copy that you've almost all finished in here already. And some of you have already started and finished your external already. So you need to send me your uh, local host and then also the URL to week 11 on your external. Just remember, on your external, if you look on the overhead, watch this podcast because it goes over in detail how to create your MySQL database, find out how to find out what your username is, password, and the new path to your MySQL database connection instead of using just local host. Okay, so watch that podcast. It'll show you how to do that. Um, I think a couple in here have already finished. So I want to go in back now to week 12, which is going to start next week. Week 12, week 13, week 14, you're working on your final site. And on weeks 12, 13, and 14, those attendance are optional. Okay, I will be here each session to help you, but if you want to work from home, you may do so. But I wanted to kind of, you do all need to be here on week 15, the week before our presentation on week 16. But let me go over some of the requirements for your final. Um, if you go in week 12, I have basically all you're doing in week 12 is telling me what your uh, you're submitting to me, the type of website you're creating. Do not submit the above example for next week, which is on a CMS CMS file system. You're just doing that to play with. You're not going to submit anything to me. I really want you to start on your final site next week. Do not submit your the above CMS since it's only for practice, but you're going to choose business or personal. This link here will send you to, I'll go ahead and open it. This link here will send you to final site examples that you can look at from prior semesters that students have done. I'll go ahead and click on a few here. Okay, and so some examples that students have created. In fact, if you notice, this looks a little familiar. This is Gallery 3 that you're using tonight that he used for his gallery photos. Um, so I put up here a few examples that uh, this one here, this M Technologies example, this site right here, is actually a real business that the student did one page on the site. The boss let him use one page on the site, and what she used it for was for uh, remote connectivity and logging in to the site. She built a PHP wrapper for it. So this is a front end. She did this whole front end in uh, uh, HTML, and then there was a, a login script for the site. And let's see here if this one works here. Yeah, and this one is a photo site that had, had authentication in it. When they logged in, they had certain access rights to, uh, to upload files and things of that nature. So those are just a few final examples you can look at. Begin working on your site. There's a link here for requirements I want to go over real quick. Real easy on requirements because I don't want to limit you on what you want to do. Um, database of some type needs to be in the app. So somewhere in your website needs to be a database connectivity. Um, it could be simply logging in, it could be a uh, guest book, whatever it is you want uh, to put in your database. I'm guessing out of the box, the easy one, easiest would probably be to implement the guest book from week two or three in our course. There's a guest book code that you can use right out of the box that we went over, uh, and you can plug that right into your site. Tables with data, that's a no-brainer because you have to have a database to have data, data with table. Uh, and then user interaction with your data. This one could be, again, uh, the message board. It could also be um, uh, the photo site, photo gallery. It, it uses the database as well with user interactivity. Um, it could also be a personalization thing, like in week 10, where they're able to choose different themes possibly for the site, where you can choose different CSS pages possibly to change the colors. Uh, it's up to you on user interaction. It's very wide scope on that one. And then image page, um, image page, gallery three, no brainer on that one. I'm guessing most will use that. Um, I think I told you prior you could use like a Flickr web page and they have, in Flickr they have uh, code that you can paste into a regular HTML page to show a gallery. But I'm thinking 
Gallery 3 is probably going to be just as easy to use and quick and easy to, to, to implement for your site. Um, now, some of your sites, though, I have had this happen over the years where maybe an image page really was stretching a little bit for the student site that they wanted to create. If that's the case, just let me know uh, by next week that you don't really see a need for images pages or an image page. That's fine. You know, you tell me what kind of site you're doing, and there's been times I'll be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You don't need one. Don't worry about it. Uh, validation of some type. Now, validation could be form validation. Validation could be, um, you know, any type of validation that you want on your website to validate the user is who they say they are, or validation of maybe, let's talk about the message board, the guest book, validation that the users enter in data in those fields before hitting submit. That would be validation as well. Okay, so validation is not just username and password, it could also be field validation, which you know how to do that. Message board, already went over that, and then user personalization. User personalization could be everything from using cookies, uh, for certain personalization on the website uh, to uh, allowing them to change CSS themes on the website. And so user personalization can be wide scope as well. Just be creative in that, thinking on how, how you want to implement user personalization. Um, remember on the cookies lab, we talked about how it could be used for user personalization, meaning when a person goes to a website and say they um, are on your about page. We'll say that they're on their about page and they exit out your browser, their browser. Well, you could have a cookie that just saves every time they go to a page on your site and all that cookie saves is the name of the page. And so when they come back again, it goes right to that page they left off on. Easy, right? So you do something like that. Um, and so pretty wide scope. I try to leave it wide open as far as requirements go. And if any of these don't seem to fit into your site, again, let me know, and I'm like, and you explain to me why it won't fit, and I'm, I'll be like, okay, I'll ask questions of maybe why, ways you could use use these. But if you're like, um, I don't see it because of this, this, and this, more than likely I'll be like, okay, sounds good, All right? So it does not have to be every one of these from one to seven. In fact, some of you will probably go beyond seven and other things that aren't in here, and that's the whole purpose. I don't want it to be so far-reaching that you're not gonna be able to accomplish all of them, but I also want it to be so minimal that you, you know, are gonna have to do anything. And so, <laughs> kind of a happy medium to where you'll be able to finish it in three to four weeks easily. Uh, will there be things you still wanna work on by week 16 when you present? Yeah, that's the whole purpose of it. Hopefully you'll get some, something that you'll wanna do that you won't have time to do, that you'll be like, oh, I wish I had time to do that. That's what I want. I want that feeling on week 16 to where you're not, I don't want you to be totally satisfied with your final site. I want you to want to work on it more. That way after the class, hopefully you'll work on it more. And whether it be for a business site, personal site, or whatever. Just like these sites here that I show you, the example sites I just showed you earlier, some of those sites I've had up for examples in here for five years. And the students keep them up because the one I looked at tonight was three years old. It says copyright 2013. So what that tells me is they're still using it. They're still working on it and playing with it. And so that's, that's what I want to see. Uh, something that you can use, work on that. Don't create a site that you would never use. I don't want that. Create a site that you could use, whatever that might be. It could be a simple, you know, in the past we've had, you know, students create a, a schedule for their family where they can log in and everybody can figure out what their schedules are for like family reunions, they can post pictures, they can communicate through a message board, and it's something functional that their family used and still does use. To a photo site that just is focuses on photo galleries, um, to um, hobbies that you have, something that means something to you personally you'll get more out of it. Does that make sense? Is if it's something that you're like, I don't want to, that's the whole reason I don't give you a box whatever for the final site. I want you to actually own it, work on it, and you've got plenty of time to finish it. You're not going to be rushed at all. You'll have, uh, you know, starting with week 12, uh, let's see here, we got 
technically 12, 13, 14, 15, four weeks in total to work on your final site. So week 12, week 13, week 14, and 15. And by the way, in each one of these folders, I repeat all of the requirements, all the final site resources, also examples of past semesters that you can look at. Um, so you're not at any you know, flux of not having data needed for that week. And then finally in week 16, you will post at the bottom here your URL to your final site. And I did put a disclaimer in here, which could happen. Let's say at the end of it, your site will only work on local host. Good. You're still going to be able to present. <laughs> There's no reason why you can't present. Okay. Now, do, is your goal to get it to work on an external site? Yeah, but that's not the end goal. That's not the end result. The end result is to get a working PHP website. And if you can only get it working on local host, you can only get it working on local host. Okay. And so if you figure that you want to do that and you know, you're, getting, you're having issues with external on some of the stuff, don't use external. Just do local host. And then on week 16, you'll present it with your local host environment to everybody. Make sense? And so if that's the case, you'll just say at the bottom here, local host. That's all I'm presenting, local host. And you'll come up here and present it local host. Um, you'll also put in week 16, uh, a zip file of everything like we've done each week so I can look at it. Um, also, what's nice about starting next week is, since I'm going to be here, even if you don't come, you can email me your code and I can help you with certain things you might have need of. It doesn't have to be just on Wednesday. You can email me anytime, day or night. And I'm pretty quick. I try to be pretty quick. I'm responding to all of your emails. And so those of you that have emailed me this semester with issues, I hopefully I've been fairly quick on responding to your emails. Um, so if you have issues, you can just email me your entire bit of code and say, you know, I've worked on this for a week and I just cannot get it. Can you help me? And tell me where it's at and I'll look at it. And I'll, I'll help you with it. Okay. And so week 16, you'll post your website, you'll submit it or compress it. Uh, tell me what kind of snack you're going to bring. Because that night I'm going to also bring pizza that night for everybody. And so as folks are prepping for their presentation in between that time, between individuals presenting their sites, you guys will come up here and get whatever you brought along with pizza that I brought. And so we'll have a good time. It'll be fun, uh, exciting. You'll be able to see each other's work and also share challenges you've had because you will have challenges, successes you've had. And hey, what would I work on if I had like another six weeks? What would be my dream? of this site. And you'll have that too. You'll have that type of stuff. And so uh, any questions at all between now and week 16, what you're doing? Hopefully no questions at all. Uh, if you do have questions, come, and, come up and see me. You're not submitting what you've done tonight because most of you have already finished, I think, or half of you in here, I know, finished your local host. Half of you have finished your external host already. And so you can actually start working on your final site this week. <laughs> Uh, between now and next uh, Wednesday. Uh, there's no more podcasts per se as far as our in-class assignments because this week is the last in-class assignment and in-class lab. From here on out, you're working on your final site. Okay? And I want you to focus 100% on your final site from here on out. So if you've had issues with past assignments or things you've not finished yet maybe totally, don't worry about it. Focus 100% on your final site from here on out. Make sense? Questions? All right. Well, guess what? We're done. I told you I was going to keep you long tonight. Yes? Uh, 